we get started, thank you guys so much for 2.6 million followers on TikTok. It's nuts. It's nuts. I don't have any other words other than this is nuts. If this is the first time you're seeing me and you don't follow me on TikTok, you can go check out my TikTok at Paige Layal. And while you're at it, you can follow my Instagram with the same name. And while you're here, I would totally appreciate if you liked this video, hit the subscribe button maybe, and ring the notification bell to get notified when I post new videos, which is every Friday. Side note, if you guys have any recommendations for any videos that you want me to do, you can email me. My email's down below. But let's get to the good part of this video and which is my studying tips specifically for neurodivergent minds. Let me go over my credentials real quick and also a little bit of background info. If you don't care, just fast forward the video a little bit. My first credential is I have a ton of neurodivergencies including autism, ADHD, OCD, anxiety, depression. My second credential is I was very, very good at school. I say good at school and not smart because those are very different things. I'm good at school because I'm very good at memorizing things, which is primarily what school is. How well can you memorize and regurgitate information? Which for me is very good. Before we get into these tips, I have a few things that I want want you to keep in mind that I'm trying to keep in mind. I have an eidetic memory, so memory is very easy to me. I'm also autistic, which means that I have a hard time understanding that not every single person thinks and acts and does things in the same way that I do. So some of these things may not work for you, but I hope that I give you enough that you find at least one or two things that will. Up until high school, I had a 99% average, and then in high school, my average was about 95 and a half. And then in university with the grade point things and school I went to did it differently. And then I dropped out after second year. So that gets a little confusing. But throughout my whole life, I've always been top of my class. And by top, I mean like, the top. I mean, there were a few times that I was in the top of the class, definitely in a few classes for sure. So these are the ways that work for my brain and hopefully your brain to help me study and memorize things better. Disclaimer, I am not a scientist. I'm not a neurologist. I'm not a teacher. I'm just a neurodivergent human being who also did really good in school. And those are my only credentials. So please don't take this as scientific fact. Please don't take this as you will get straight A's on all your tests because Paige Leal said this was going to work. These are just things that help me and I hope they help you too. First, I'm going to talk about general tips and then I'm going to get more into specifics. My first general tip. You need to be interested. If you're watching this, you're likely neurodivergent and your brain likely operates on a reward-based dopamine system. You're gonna have a really hard time memorizing something that is not interesting to you because you're likely gonna associate that with not being important to you, which is completely fair. My recommendation is make things as exciting and rewarding as possible. And that's where a lot of these tips also come in is making things rewarding to you in your brain. But how do I make something boring exciting? Do you have something that you really, really like or something that just makes you really happy? Do you have a movie that you really like? A song or an artist that you really like? What, did, what are you passionate about what is something that you really like for example history i find really boring and i can't memorize it very well a way that i can be more excited about history is instead of having random obscure guys and their names i really like musicals and one of my favorite musicals is hamilton which i guess kind of goes into history so maybe that's kind of lucky let's not use hamilton les mis and i would try to fit the characters from history into the characters from Les Mis. And then I could just pretend that I was actually talking about Les Mis. And that also kind of helped me memorize things because I knew a lot about Les Mis and all the stories and where all the characters did. And if I could associate them somehow with the actual historian figures that we're talking about, that was a way to keep me interested and also help me memorize what was going on. Or if there's a concept that you're not getting, try to relate it to a concept of one of your favorite movies or a song that you really like. Being interested in something is really important. Getting interested in something is a little hard. So I try to associate with something that I'm already interested in. There are some things that I know there's no way I'm going to get interested in them. So I just fake it. Fake it till you make it. My second general tip is the reward based system. This is going to be a big deal. Your brain works differently. So you're going to need different things in order to help this get into your head. One of those is take breaks. Seriously. Unless this is a subject that you're super interested in, you can hyper focus on this subject and learn everything there is to know about it in a short amount of time. You are going to need to take breaks. If you're not interested in something and you're trying to learn all there is to know about it, your brain is not not getting it. No matter how long you sit there for, no matter how many times you reread the paragraph, your brain's still not going to get it. You could sit there for hours and do it over and over and over again. Your brain's not getting it. Take a break. Okay. Do something productive with that time because then you're going to feel guilty and you're going to feel bad and you're going to feel stressed and you're going to feel a bunch of things if you're sitting there and you're not getting something. Take breaks. And in those breaks, make sure you do things like rest if you need to eat food, take care of your human vessel that you inhabit, or do something rewarding to you, like going on TikTok, getting that instant dopamine reward when you scroll something. Go work out, that's gonna release a lot of endorphins and make you happy and get you motivated. Play with your dog, take a selfie, do whatever you need to do within that break time, and then get back to it when you feel like you're in the mood. Because my second tip is you really need to study in and ebb and flow with how you're feeling. If you feel like you're hyper-focused and you wanna learn everything there is to know about this thing and you were dived into it and 
probably it's something that you're interested in that you really enjoy, use that. Use that hyper focus because sometimes it doesn't come and then that's yeah, not really fun. So when it does happen and when you are hyper focused, use that. If that happens when you're studying, which for a lot of us it doesn't because studying is boring. But also keep in mind that when you're in a mood where you're crashed and you feel like your brain can't absorb anything, don't force it because nine times out of 10 forcing it is not going to work. And there are things you can do to get you more in the mood for studying, like relating it to something that you find interesting or changing your whole way of studying to make it a more reward based system which we will talk about. So using a reward-based system can look like a few things. The first thing is finding what rewards you. What is something that when you get it, you feel good? What is something that gives you that dopamine? Some examples are, for those who are safe to do this, food, candy, snacks, drawing, writing, singing, dancing, playing a sport, going on social media, talking to a friend, playing with your pet, stimming, watching a TV show. The first step is finding what rewards you. And the second step is integrating that into your studying routine. Here are some of my examples. To keep me interested in something that I was reading, I would let myself have a piece of candy or something like a carrot. I really like snacking on carrot. After every paragraph I read. That enticed me to keep reading, also helped me check where I am, and helped me remember more of what's going on. Because finally, I'm getting a reward out of reading this paragraph. Or if I had to memorize a lot of information at once, I would make a dance about it. I'm a dancer, so I do a lot of dance and that's kind of my rewarding thing. And each move was an answer of something that I needed to memorize. So the studying was actually rewarding because the studying was me doing something that I actually wanted to do, but just incorporated studying into it. I recommend if you're doing a practice test or you're trying to get the correct answer to something and you have to check and see if you got the correct answer, reward yourself every time, not just when you get the correct answer. With neurodivergent brains, a lot of the times it isn't necessarily getting something right as much as it is doing the thing. Okay, so you got your rewards, which is going to help you. And here are more specific things that I do to help me study. First thing, don't type things. If you're going to regurgitate information, write it down. It's scientifically proven that you remember things better when you hand write them rather than type them. Typing is good if you wanna be quick, but I highly recommend writing everything into your own notes, into your own words, in your own handwriting to help. When you're writing, use different colors. Differentiate the different colors with different units, different thoughts, different ideas, different subjects. Make all of the really hard hard to grasp concepts your favorite color. It's probably the color that you're going to look at most when you're looking over your notes. And it's the hard stuff, the, the stuff that you have the hardest time remembering. So you'll likely remember it better. When you're writing down your own notes, make sure you're doing it in a way that works for you. I mean that if writing paragraphs works best for you, if you're best at memorizing paragraphs, then do that. I'm better with lists. And so usually I will list things or if it's a concept like math or science, or if there's an order to things, I will number them in numbered lists. Numbers usually help me remember things because I can remember the number of numbers and then even if that way if I only get 11 steps when I know there are 12 steps then I'll know that there's something wrong and I need to go back somewhere. Also when you're making your own notes make little symbols or things to help you remember things. You can do that right on your paper and so then even if you're on the test you can be like oh that was the one I put a star next to. That may not help you very much in the moment but here are some things you can do to remember those things. With the hard to grasp concepts again the ones that you colored in your favorite color the ones that you put a star beside make them into something else that's easier for you to remember. Like are you really good at remembering song lyrics? Make that concept into a song or find a song already that fits that concept and recall that song with the concept. I'm really familiar with the periodic table. Instead of a relationship between people, which I don't understand very well, autism, I will instead make them different elements and be like, oh, well, obviously they react together. He's a noble gas, so he doesn't really react with anybody. Oh my God, that's such an argon thing to say. Also zodiac signs, I do that a lot with people. I'm like, oh my God, Aries. Oh, hella Virgo over there. Oh my God, Libra? Really? Okay. And usually I will draw, instead of like just a star beside the things that I have a hard time remembering, I'll draw a, a picture of something that connects it more. Like if I associate it with the song, I'll write the song title next to it or an element on the periodic table, I will write the element next to it or draw a cute little sketch. This is easier to remember in my brain anyway. Songs are a really good one for me because I always have like a song stuck in my head or some kind of song going through my head. So it might as well be one that I can use in the test that I'm doing. But another thing, and this is my absolute favorite way of studying, make your own tests. And if the test is something like me just memorizing different things, it's going to be a lot easier to make your own tests than if it's like a math test. But you still have a lot of things you need to memorize in order to do a math test rather than also just doing the math. Obviously, if it's math, you should probably do the math. That's what's going to be the best for you. But if it's things that you need to memorize, make your own question and answers. Most 
most of my notebooks from all of my years are just filled of questions and then also the answer. And they're all numbered, so there can be, you know, 500 different questions in my notebook for this unit. The first way this helps is I'm writing everything, so I'm writing the question and the answer, which is going to help me as well. It's also numbered, so that's going to help me, I'll associate this question with a certain number, go back in my head, know what's around those questions, and that can kind of help me with the answer. And also there are a lot of different ways you can study using this method. One way is having a friend or somebody reading the questions to you and then you answering them. So even if they don't know much about the subject, if they're not in your class or whatever, they have the answer in front of them and they can check you if you're doing the answer wrong. And another thing you can do, and my personal favorite thing you can do, is record on your phone you asking the question, leave enough pause for you to give the answer later, and then give the answer and continue like that. I have hundreds probably of voice notes of me on my phone asking the question, pausing, and then giving the answer and keep going with all those questions. And then my way of studying, even while I'm just walking to class or while I'm going to the bathroom or while I'm showering, is playing that voice recording and hearing the questions going on over and over again and the answer with them. So even if I don't know the answer, I know that the answer is coming up. I specifically like this method for if you're driving a lot or using public transit, if you have a lot of in-between time where you're not really doing much. A lot of us are listening to music anyway, so you might as well listen to yourself study and have someone asking you the questions that you know you're going to be asked. And I will usually listen to them so much that I know all of the answers that I'm not getting any of them wrong. I really hope that some of those tips helped you guys out. I wish you luck on whatever it is that you are studying for. I'm sure you're going to do fantastic. Keep in mind that the most important thing is to take care of yourself and listen to your body and your emotions. Taking breaks is very important when you have an overactive mind like a lot of us do. As always, it was great seeing you here. This has been Paige Layal talking about autism and stuff. I love you guys all so much and I will see you next week. Bye!